What's up everyone, Coach Jim from Nerd Fitness here, and today we are gonna talk about how to get your first one-legged squat. The one-legged squat is a challenging movement that tests your mobility, strength, and balance all at the same time. Perfectly balanced as all things should be. We'll cover several exercises that you can do today to get you ready for more advanced training, some common mistakes that I see that can limit your progress and even injure you, and we'll talk about some killer adjustments to get you past any sticking points with this skill. Before we jump in, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification for more great content like this. All right, let's go. So I assume if you're watching this video, you already know what a one-legged squat is, but for those of you who just wandered in, we're looking to do a squat on one leg all the way down until our hamstring touches our calf. We wanna keep our foot flat on the ground and we're gonna keep our non-working leg straight out in front of us. You'll often hear this also referred to as a pistol squat. One of the first things to do if you want to get a deep one-legged squat is to work on getting a deep two-legged squat. So if you're unable to squat nice and low with both feet on the ground, then let's test and improve our mobility and work on some regressive exercises. For mobility, let's first take a look at the ankles. Tight ankles are often a huge limiting factor for the two-legged squat. To test your ankle mobility, stand facing a wall with the toes of one of your foot touching the wall. You're then going to want to drive your knee forward over your toe and touch the wall while still keeping the heel of that foot on the ground. Every time you're able to touch the wall with your knee, just move your foot back a little bit further. Keep on repeating this until you're unable to touch the wall with your knee and still keep the heel on the ground. What you want to then do is measure the distance between your toe and the wall for that last successful touch you had. We'd ideally have a distance of somewhere around three and a half to five inches or nine to 13 centimeters between your toes and the wall on that last test. Now, everyone's proportions are going to require different mobility in the ankles, but being somewhere around that ballpark is really gonna help. If you were miles away from that ballpark, then it's definitely time to start working on your ankle mobility. The first thing to do is start stretching the calves. You can put your toes up on an elevated surface and stretch the calf with the leg in both a straight and a knee bent position, going for about 30 to 60 seconds per side for several sets. We can also lightly mobilize the ankle joint, which should help a lot. So in order to do that, you can take a band, anchor it on a low point and step your foot inside. Get a bit of tension on the band and then you're just going to drive the knee forward just like you did for the wall mobility test. You still want to focus on driving the knee over the toes just like before, performing several sets of 10 to 15 reps, doing this as well several times a week. Now for improved hip mobility to help with your squats, there's a lot of different stretches, but one of my favorite is the Spider-Man stretch. And that's not just because of the name. I want Spider-Man! What you want to do for this one is take a big lunge out, put your hands on the ground on the inside of that front leg, and then you're going to turn toward your front leg and reach up to the sky. When you're in this position, you can really work on sinking forward and down and getting a nice good stretch through the hip and even the ankle. Do this for several sets of three to five reps per side and you're really gonna feel a difference. The Spider-Man can also be done on an elevated surface to make things a little bit easier. So feel free to step that front foot up onto a set of steps, a bench, a box, whatever's sturdy that allows you to really sink down into position and again, stretch those hips. And while we're talking about lower body mobility and not to jump too far ahead, but if you're having trouble keeping your non-working leg straight out in front of you on your one-legged squat, then you definitely want to stretch the hamstrings. You can easily do this by laying on your back and then wrapping a towel or a band around your foot. You then can bring your knee into your chest and while holding tension on that towel or band, drive your heel to the ceiling back and forth. You can do this for about 10 to 15 reps per side, and I think you'll really feel a difference when you try the one-legged squat again. Now, while you're working on improving your mobility, let's work on some exercises too. Now, this can start off with something as simple as an assisted bodyweight squat. So you can grab onto some rings or chairs or a doorway and work on squatting as low as you can go. Do this for several sets of eight to 10 reps. Once the assisted bodyweight squat feels easy, go with the unassisted bodyweight squat as low as you can go. Again, working for several sets of eight to 10 reps. 
Now, if you make this switch from assisted bodyweight squat to unassisted bodyweight squat, and you suddenly find your depth is a little bit limited, there's a couple different things that we can do right now. First is to try grabbing a light weight and holding it out at arm's length in front of us, something like five to 10 pounds, nothing too heavy. This weight will allow us to stay balanced and squat a little bit lower, but not be so heavy that it's exceedingly challenging. Or you can elevate your heels on some weight plates or some solid books in order to help improve your squat depth. This will help keep you balanced even if your ankles are a little bit tight. You'll then wanna reduce the counterweight or the heel lift as the weeks progress. We'll see both of these adjustments, the counterweight and the heel elevation with other exercises today too. If you use either one of those, still continue to work on your ankle and hip mobility. All right, on a scale from easy to excruciating, how's your squat mobility? Let us know in the comments below. Another exercise that you can do to help improve one-legged squat mobility and strength is to do weighted squats. Getting stronger on two legs is going to translate really well to strength on your one leg. You can focus on exercises like goblet squats or heavy back squats. All right, so you've improved your mobility and you've increased your leg strength. Now it's time to start working on the balance component of this exercise. The first exercise we're gonna work in that regard is the assisted one-legged squat. Now there's a lot of ways we can assist with this exercise. We can use rings or chairs or a doorway. You just wanna make sure you find something that allows you to put weight in your arms and helps assist you through the entire range of motion. All right, let's talk about a few key points as you work this exercise. So first, make sure you stay balanced in the one-legged squat as you go on down. You wanna make sure you're not leaning back like you're water skiing. I'm supposed to go water skiing. Next, be sure to keep your heel on the ground the entire time. This is gonna provide a much stronger base for support as well as make the balance a lot easier. You might squat a little bit lower if your heel lifts up, but you're gonna find a huge loss of control and you're gonna put your knee at a little bit more risk. And next, we wanna keep our foot, our knee, and our hip all in a nice line. Many times I see people's knees cave inwards as they're trying the one-legged squats. Now, if this happens on our one-legged squats, it's kind of like if we were doing a two-legged squat and our knees cave in. It's just not the strongest position and can put a lot of undue stress on the knee joints. To help avoid this, focus on pushing the knee outwards so that it does stay in line with the foot and the hip. Another similar but often overlooked mistake is allowing the hips to jut outwards. So the foot and the knee will be in line, but then the hip will be way out to this side. Now, this is something that, again, can tweak the knee, so I'm demonstrating it on two legs here, but the fix for this is the same as the fix for that caved in knee. You wanna focus on pushing the knee out and making sure, again, the foot, the knee, and the hip are all in a nice, good, solid line. Practice good form like this and look to build up until you can do some assisted one-legged squats for several sets of five to eight repetitions per leg. If after all these cues, you're still not able to do a single rep with the assisted one-legged squats, then just take a step back. Work on your mobility, work on your two-legged strength, you can even work lunges with a little bit more emphasis on the front leg. Whatever you do, don't get frustrated. This is a really challenging skill. It takes a lot of time, a lot of work. Now, when you can do those assisted reps confidently, we can progress further by pausing at the bottom of each rep. Now, when you pause at the bottom of each rep, we still wanna feel balanced and engaged. You can even reduce the assistance from your arms slightly at that point. When you're able to lower down and pause for those five to eight reps, then it's a good time to add negative one-legged squats into our training. Now, these negative one-legged squats will be challenging in that we don't have assistance to help lower us down, but we're only gonna be working the first half of the movement. What you wanna do, get yourself set, lift your arms and leg up, slowly lower down onto the bottom, and then once at the bottom, shift your weight over to two feet and stand back up to start again. Build up your strength in this exercise until you can do several sets of three to five reps per leg. You wanna work this alongside your assisted one-legged squats in your training throughout the week. Now, if we start to work this negative one-legged squat and we're having trouble getting low in this unassisted position, then we can bring in the counterweight or elevate the heel, just like we did with the previous exercises. 
still look to work on improving your ankle mobility and hip mobility. And then of course, over the weeks, look to reduce and eliminate that counterweight or reduce and eliminate that heel lift. Are all these one-legged squat variations feeling pretty strong so far? Awesome. This is a great time to try your first one-legged squat. Warm up a little bit, try a few assisted one-legged squats, and then give it a go for the real thing. Did you get it? Congrats! If not, no worries. Keep on working your assisted one-legged squats and your negative one-legged squats. Or with your one-legged squat, you can work it with a counterweight or an elevated heel, just like we've done before. Whatever you do, don't get frustrated. It takes a lot of time and hard work, but you can get your first one-legged squat. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a big old thumbs up if you did. We really appreciate that. Also let us know in the comments if you're still having any other troubles with this skill. We'd really like to help. And definitely let us know when you get your first one-legged squat. We always love to hear about that. And if you'd like even more help with your training, check out Nerd Fitness Online Coaching. We can help you get strong wherever you are with whatever you have, whether you're working out at a gym or at home with no equipment. Link in the description below. Thanks again, everyone. Stay strong, stay nerdy. Thanks again, stay strong. <laughs> we'll cover several, oh my gosh, several, several exercises. I can't say that. <laughs> And while we're talking about lower mod... <laughs>